and uh, the broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. All right, everyone. Thank you for coming. My name is Brandon Boucher. I am the uh, research product manager and support manager at AD Instruments North America. Uh, thank you for coming to our latest in our uh, Lab Chart Mastery webinar series. Uh, today we're going to be talking about calibrating your DMT myograph. So before we get started in kind of the content here, I just wanted to mention uh, the uh, webinar, how it's going to work. Uh, all attendee uh, audio will be muted, so I won't be able to hear you during the presentation. However, during the presentation at any point, if you have questions, feel free and type it in into the GoToWebinar toolbar here uh, under the questions area. So if you just type that in there, whether you're on Macintosh or Windows, and you can see the difference between the two here, uh, just type that into the questions area, and I'll get to that at the end of the presentation. As we're going forward here, I wanted to let you know about some of the other training opportunities that we have available to you coming up. We have the uh, rodent pressure volume training course that's going to be happening at the end of this week in Westminster, Colorado. Uh, that one's sold out. Um, but however, we have all of these other training courses here. And the lab chart training course um, is essentially an expanded version of, of what you're looking at today. So if you're familiar with the webinars and you, you, you like the webinar series, uh, the lab chart training course is a two-day you know, course all about lab chart. Uh, you begin to learn everything about lab chart from beginning to end. So I, I suggest you know, if, you, if you enjoy the webinar series, uh, check this out, and uh, you can learn even more about our equipment. Uh, other webinars we have coming up here, we have uh, data quality coming up on the 14th of August, and we have managing lab chart features and files coming up in, uh, on August 30th. So look forward to those coming up. And both for the training series and the webinar series, you can find those uh, coming up at avianstruments.com slash events. So before we get into the webinar program here, uh, just a little bit of a statement of intended use. Um, all of our products, AD Instruments products, are not intended to be used as medical devices. Uh, that is, they are not men intended to diagnose, treat, or monitor a subject. Um, during recording, however, with uh, specific front end amplifiers, we can connect our equipment to humans and we have this approval. Um, so it is safe for connection to human subjects, uh, given that the equipment that you're connecting to them has either the body protection symbol, a little man there, and or the, or the cardiac protective symbol, which is the heart in the box there. All of uh, our equipment, um, AD Instruments manufactures the equipment under a quality system um, that is uh, ISO certified. So we actually have a third party come in and, and check that out for us and do the uh, certification for us. The design, manufacture, sale, servicing of data recording instruments and software um, is covered under the scope of the ISO certification. So the webinar here, what we're going to be talking about is going to be um, calibrating the uh, DMT myograph. Now, uh, what we're going to focus on specifically first, uh, the myograph range settings. Uh, I need to cover that essentially because this seems to be, you know, in our experience here in the support side of things, as a support manager, I've noticed that, you know, we've, that's a place where um, we've missed, that, you know, some things in support and, and customers miss this as well. So we need to mention that just so that uh, you're familiar with that, uh, the range settings, they're important, they're key to setting those correctly and, and matching those to the data you're going to be calibrating to. Uh, then we're going to talk about the calibration procedure. And then we're going to go cover our DMT normalization module. So essentially everything you need to know about the equipment uh, to get started and to begin recording data. So I'm going to switch over to lab chart here. And just take me a second to switch over. So you should see lab chart come up on your screen here pretty quickly. Um, lab chart is showing both a single channel of data that we're going to use to show you how to uh, uh, record some data, and then we're also or how to uh, set up recording the data. And then we're also going to uh, show you the front of the screen on the DMT uh, myograph here uh, while I'm operating it. 
And the reason for that is that we're going to get, have the ability to essentially show you uh, what I was talking about in terms of those, you know, those range values as well as the force calibration, how to actually get that done uh, properly. So what we're going to do here first is uh, I'm going to begin recording some data. One thing of note here while we're beginning to record is that I am sampling data with a range of one volt. That's simply because I, during this presentation, I'm not going to reach anything higher than that. Um, you'll want to reach, you'll want to set this um, to something that's going to match the output you expect from the DMT myograph. So keep that in mind. So I'm going to reach over here to the DMT system, and I'm going to show you a few things about it. First of all, I'm going to go back to the main screen here. I only have one chamber connected, so that's what you're going to see. You're going to see a chamber connected to chamber two. And what I'd like to do is just show you a couple of things that we need to set up um, before we even think about um, calibrating. Uh, this is something, again, that you know, some people miss. And oftentimes, if, if these aren't set correctly, it leaves your data ending up really looking digitized. comes out with uh, some you know, larger steps in terms of resolution that you'd really like. Uh, and that's simply because we haven't set these things properly. So I'm going to show you a couple of those. So to do this, what we're going to do is we're going to come over to Settings. I'm going to click on the Settings button here. And you'll see some of the options that come up. Uh, you'll see the force calibration come up, and we'll go through that in a minute. But the two we're going to talk about here are the force recording output and the measurement range. Okay. Um, the key to these really, and, and I'll keep this fairly brief, the key to these, if I click on measurement range, um, the key to these is you want to match these to the range that you expect to record. The lowest range, I believe, here uh, in, in any of these is 200 millinewtons. Yeah, so we can go to 200 to 1600 millinewtons. So if you're going to be recording, you know, you know all of your values are going to be lower than 200 millinewtons. You want to keep that at 200 millinewtons. You won't want to go any higher than that. That's simply because this is, you know, this instrument, even though you're recording with a force transducer, is in essence a digital instrument and will digitize that signal. Um, and looking at a range of 200 millinewtons essentially creates a situation where your resolution on the system is matched up to the data of interest. So don't raise this any higher than you really need to. And the same is true for the uh, force recording output. If we go to settings and we go to the force recording output, uh, again, you'll want to match these values as closely as possible to what we're actually going to be recording. So in my case, um, the force number two is what I have connected, and that's what I really uh, need to set up. And I'm going to lower this to something much lower. And you can see you can go down to 20 millinewtons, because I'm not going to get much higher than 20 millinewtons with what I'm about to present. And so giving you the best data quality possible um, you know, is accomplished by matching these two values to your data of interest. Okay? So keep that in mind. So now what we're going to do is I'm going to attempt to calibrate our data. Uh, first, I'm going to show you how to zero it. Okay? Right now, I have nothing uh, touching my chamber. Um, unfortunately, my camera doesn't really give us a very good picture of the chamber, so I can't show you too much about it uh, while I'm doing this, but I will show you some images so you have some frame of reference. Okay, so there's nothing touching my force transducer, and so that's that's the ideal situation to do this zero. Um, so you can do that here by clicking the button here, zero. And after we have clicked the button zero, we can select the chamber that we want to zero by clicking select here. Alternatively, we can also click all zero all the chambers. Of course, I only have one connected, so I'm going to be only zeroing that one. Uh, and we can hit enter, and we should be able to zero that chamber. Okay. So now what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be setting up my um, calibration protocol. Now I'm going to calibrate both the myograph, and you're going to watch me do that. And you should be able to also watch lab chart what happens there, um, and you can watch how, how that's calibrated as well. Okay. So what I'm doing, going to do here, and I'll just show you briefly, is I'm going to set my balance up across my chamber, okay, and then I am going to set my calibration T 
up, and you can see that here. I'm holding this in my hand. I'm going to set my calibration T up. Okay, and so because you know my camera is not really going to show this terribly well, uh, what I'm going to do is switch over and just give you a little image of what I'm going to be doing. So here in a second, you should see an image uh, pop up that shows us the balance placement. Okay, and so what I'm going to be doing before I place uh, this the two gram weight onto my balance, I'm going to be setting up this calibration T uh, so that the pin that goes down into the jaw is in between the wire and the jaw mechanism itself, and is not touching either the wire or the jaw. So you want that to be balanced in there pretty well. Um, and we're talking about this area here where the T or the pin comes down. You want to make sure that that goes right in that area uh, without touching the wire or the wall, ideally. Okay, so once we get that set up, um, and I'm going to do that here myself. Switching back over to the lab chart for you. So I'm going to get my T set up here. It'll take me just one second. Okay, so a couple things to consider when you did what I just did there. Now, I showed you that image, how you're going to set up the uh, calibration pin. Um, but what you want to make sure you do is that you set that in a place, again, so it's not touching the wire or the wall. Um, and then you also want to stabilize it, because if it's shaking and it's bouncing off that wire, it's going to destabilize some of your course recordings. So keep that in mind as well. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go through the procedure of calibrating our DMT myogram. So what we're going to do here is go to Settings. And we're going to click on force calibration. OK, so now we have the option to calibrate any one of our four chambers. And what I'm going to do is make sure, sorry about that. I'm just trying to make sure we get nice and focused here. So you guys can see this well. There it is. All right. So what I'm going to do now is click on chamber two, because that's the one I have connected. I can calibrate that. Now you'll see it's highlighted in blue, so I'm going to hit enter. And the nice thing about the DMT uh, 620 here is it's going to take you through the entire step and the entire process. And you can just follow the instructions and follow along. So it just says follow the weight calibration procedure in the user manual. Prepare the jaws and chamber for calibration. When ready, go to the next step. We're going to click next here. Now it says place the calibration bridge on the myograph. And I already did that. And remember, we placed the bridge so the pin does not touch the wire or the jaw. And that is a key point here. If we, are, if we set that up so the pin is touching the wire or the jaw when we're trying to zero, what we end up getting is something that's not zero. So we want to make sure that we, we've done that uh, properly. Next, we're going to go to the next step. And we'll make sure the heat is on. Now, the heat is an important part of calibration. I do not want to minimize this. Um, but I didn't have any. You know, um, thing here ready to place into the chamber here. I didn't want to put some tap water in there, so um, I'm not measuring temperature. But it is key that you wait for temperature to equalize uh, to equal 37 degrees or whatever temperature you're going to be making measurements at. Uh, needs to be at that temperature before you begin the calibration procedure. And that's that's a pretty key. Um, aspect simply because you know these force transducers and, and main transducers like them uh, are affected by temperature so you need to keep that in mind. So once that goes to the correct temperature we're going to go to the next step. It says make sure transducer is not subjected to any force. When the relative force reading is stable, go to the next step and you can see here is the 3232, that's our relative force reading. Um, that is the one we want to be stable and it's sitting right there nice and stable. Click 
next and go to the next step again. Now it says carefully place the two gram weight on the pan. And when I do this, you can watch the force chamber relative force reading 3232 change. But you'll also see it change in lab chart. And that's the two key things you want to make sure we do here. So I'm going to place this on here quickly. And you can see that change. It says 3409. And we should definitely see, looks like I got uh, this value to go out of range. And you know why this is happening. So I'm going to go back and talk about this. So here in lab chart, you'll notice that uh, in this area here, before I changed the range on my system, I went out of range. And, that's, and the reason that happened, uh, and I wasn't prepared for it, is because I changed the output um, values on the DMT myograph before I, um, I changed it after I actually set the range on the power line system here. So I needed to to reset the range, and I'm going to go do these steps again. So I'm going to go back. Sorry about that. I'm going to go back here, and I'm going to make sure I zero it again so it's stable. That's zeroed. Now what I'm going to do is place my 2-gram weight on here. So I have that. Go to the next step. And this should read right about 9.81 millimeters. Next up again, and we're calibrated. So that's our force calibration on the myograph. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to talk about how to calibrate lab chart correctly. So uh, we now have two values here. You see that we have this value here, which is definitely our zero area. Okay, so I want to zero that. And to do that, I'll, first what I'm going to do is um, come over here and click in that area and do a control K. So I can comment this area is zero. And I'm going to also give, place a comment here, control K. This area is 9.81 millinewtons. Okay. So I have those two values. And what I'd like to do now is calibrate those. So I'm going to make a selection of data that includes both of my values, my zero values here on the left and my 9.81 millinewtons here on the right. Once my selection includes both of those, I'm going to click on this channel one name and I'm going to go to units conversion. You can use units conversion to calibrate uh, you know, any, any sort of instrument as long as you can get some sort of known values in here. Uh, so what I'm going to do is make a selection here at zero. Click on my first point. Okay, so that value is placed here and we know that to be zero. I'm going to make another selection here. And we know that to be 9.81 millinewtons. Okay. Uh, millinewtons is listed here, okay, but if it wasn't listed in the units area, you can actually define a unit and create your own units of millinewtons. I'm going to choose millinewtons here and click OK. Now if I begin recording, you're going to see we have our value showing here, and if I take my weight off, it should go back to round zero. Okay, so we have those two values. We're all calibrated. We're ready to go. Okay. Now, that's uh, getting ready. That's the first few steps. What I'd like to show you now, though, is you know what we do with this stuff um, after calibrating. Okay. There's one more step that we need to do, and that procedure is called normalization. So this is an example of normalization. I want you to keep in mind that while we're going through this, you can do this in real time. As you're going through and as you're recording data, um, I'll actually you know, probably set this up quickly so that I can show you how to do this um, in real time. But uh, what I'm going to do first is to show you how to do it offline. So you can see that in channel one, we have uh, my, uh, a normalization procedure. Uh, and it's been marked with comments. Okay. Um, what I'd like to do here is show you how to do it offline. Okay, first. Uh, so I'm going to I'm going to do the normalization procedure down here below. So the first thing to note here is that you, to do the normalization procedure, we first want to make sure we go to DMT and normalization settings. Okay. So you'll put in your own eyepiece calibration. Okay. 
um, millimeters per division here. Uh, in our case with this file, it was 0 0.36. You want to put in your target pressure, okay? So 13.3 is, is fairly standard, um, and that, that correlates to about 100 millimeters of mercury. Um, but one thing you want to make sure that you uh, keep in mind is that for different tissue, tissues, uh, the target values on these will be a little bit different. So it's, you want to look at the literature for these values. The other value you have here is IC1 uh, versus uh, over IC100. And that is uh, another calibration value that we'll use. Okay, so we're, what we're attempting to do here is we're trying to get the internal circumference of our uh, each of our tissues um, to something that relates to approximately 100 millimeters of mercury and, and, and the force that would be produced from that sort of uh, pressure inside of the vessel. Uh, and, and then actually we're going to be placing it at IC1, which is 0 0.9, 0 0.9 times that. Uh, so that's what these calibration values sort of mean. The online averaging time tells us, and the delay time tells us how this is going to operate when we do this online. I'll show you how to do that in a minute. Uh, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to click OK. And what I'd like to do is use, so you can see here that this is normalization procedure is already done here uh, with channel 1. Okay, so we have all of our micrometer readings, we have our force readings, and everything else, okay. Uh, and then we have our tissue endpoints and wire diameter. Uh, so what we need to do is I'm going to repeat the same thing in channel 2 and show you how that works. Okay. So our tissue endpoints are going to be, you know, what we measured when we're uh, taking a look at the tissue essentially how far apart they were, and tissue length will be calculated on that. That's tissue length at our initial zero point, or a zero point on our on our uh, micrometer, um, what we're going to be calling our, our X zero. You can see that's right here. Okay. So what we're going to do then after this is we are going to begin making our readings. So what we're going to do now is put in our 1030 micrometer reading because that's our X0. We're going to add that point. Okay. And when we've done that, what's going to happen is LabTurn is automatically going to place a comment here uh, where the force is going to be taken from. Okay. So we're going to do the same thing here. Our next micrometer reading is 1055. We're going to do the same thing here with 107. With uh, the next one is 1065, and then we're going to do the same thing with 1070. Okay, so this is offline, and now we should calculate our internal circumference um, and where that is actually in terms of. Um, terms of this vessel of interest. You can see here that our micrometer readings of 1052, this is the result we're really looking for. Okay, so once we get, you know, over you know, 100 millimeters of mercury or 13.3 kPa in terms of this uh, force recording or the uh, internal um, you know, relative pressure uh, equivalent, um, what we're looking at here is the result is the micrometer reading we need to place this tissue at so that we reach IC1, which is going to be 0.9% of IC100. So in these cases, you're going to see um, the, the, two, the two areas are very close together. Um, and so this is a very repeatable procedure or a very, uh, a very consistent procedure. Okay. So that's essentially how we use the DMT normalization module offline. Um, and we have the ability to do that fairly easily. Now, um, what I'd like to do is see if I can get this to play in for you. Okay, so I don't actually have a vessel here um, in this office. We, we we can't do those types of procedures. So what I'm going to do here is see if I can actually get this to play in for you. Uh, so I'm going to <coughs> set up lab chart to give me the ability to play some data back into uh, into lab chart. So I'm going to do that quickly for you. We should be able to get some data to play into this now. And what 
I want to do during this procedure, I want to make sure that I open up my DMT normalization. Okay. And lastly, we're going to go to the normalization settings. We're going to make sure that these are all correct, and these are the same as they were before. So we're going to have our IP calibration 0.36. We're looking for 13.3 kPa with an IC1 IC100 of 0.9. Um, our tissue endpoints were 0 0.1 and 4. Okay, so we had a tissue length of 1.4 millimeters. And lastly, our wire diameter was 40 microns. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to try and record some data here. So we end up getting out of this. So. Um, You'll, see, you'll notice here that you know we have some slight variation or some slight changing in this. And that's all right, because right now we're essentially recording nothing. Um, so what we're going to do here is we're going to type in our first make sure we get this done. So that, this is how it changed again. So now one thing we want to make sure we do is we get this timing right, OK? Um, so I'm trying to play this in, and I'm, I'm missing all of these. So what we're going to do is we're going to let this play out, and we're going to kind of start over on this to show you how to make this work. Uh, so I'm going to stop my recording here. I'm going to restart my playback. Okay. So now we know our micrometer reading at the beginning was 10.30. So, We'll essentially want to make sure we do this offline. Anyway, so uh, right now um, we'll have to do this one offline. I wasn't able to get this plane to play back properly. So um, anyway, so we, we won't be show you how to do that, but uh, you get the idea about how that's actually done. Um, so what I'd like to do here is, uh, you know, just to see if there's any questions out there. Um, let me know if there are. Otherwise, I'd like to thank you for coming to the latest installment of our Lab Chart Mastery Series webinars. Um, on, on calibrating your DMT myograph. Um, please let me know if you have any questions. I'll stick around for a little bit, but if there are none, um, thanks for coming and, and, and watching.
we have one question here. Um, and, and then during this time, I, I uh, was able to, have to actually answer the question. Somebody asked um, what the issue was, why I couldn't do this online. And the simple reason was the way I set my playback file. Um, you actually have to have Unix conversion working. So I turned on Unix conversion. And now we should get this to work properly. Uh, so what we're going to do here is we're going to go to DMT and then open up this mile force here. Uh, and I'm going to reset my playback file. OK, so this should work fine now. So we're going to start recording. Go back to my normalization here. And we're going to type in 1030 at that point. OK, so what we're going to do is it's automatically going to be doing 60-second uh, 60 60 averaging. Um, and if we should grab that in here. And then uh, at the end of 60 seconds, we're going to be seeing um, our marker go in, uh, which will give us our force recording. Okay. Now, uh, this uh, averaging is, is a bit long for this file. That's just not what we had set up there. Um, but you should see at the end of this, once we hit our 1030, um, at the end of 60 seconds, we're going to see a marker or a comment go in. It's going to take our force reading from there. Okay. So what you want to do is you want to make sure, you know, the, essentially the procedure is, you know, start recording, type in your micrometer reading, wait until a force measurement is made here. And so at, in another 10 seconds, we're going to make a force measurement. And then you're going to adjust your micrometer reading again. You're going to uh, type in your micrometer reading, hit enter, and then we'll get to the next point. Okay. So that's the idea. This will work online as well. Type in your micrometer reading as we're going along. Okay. I don't see any other questions at the moment. So uh, while we're going through here, I'd just like to say thanks again for coming. And uh, I'll see you next time.